Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again, uh, featured with uh, Sir Dodre over here. So today I wanted to give you guys kind of like progress update video 3 and 4 combined. Um, and it's going to go over like my gear and devotions and everything there. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me on the stream to update my build command and this and that. And I want to tell you guys as nice as I can that I cannot create a full guide for you guys until I've gotten this character to end game and I've actually learned about my character because I can't I don't want to give you guys false information so you guys are gonna to have to be patient I, that, that's all I'm trying to say but anyway let's go ahead and jump in and explain some new things that we've changed with the character so first off we've added a new minion to the ranks uh, and it is Sir um, OG Nepesh um, OG Nepesh has hit I think his highest crit for me has been like 77k uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and talk about all that in a little bit. So I finally have started getting a couple legendaries. I ended up getting the upgrades of my current two pieces. So I found a mythical Venomancer's Raiment and a mythical Fiend Flesh Grieve, uh, which is very good. I actually just found these like 15 seconds ago. They're not really super good, but they're just good because of the offensive ability and they give me movement speed, which is part of the reason why I'm using them. They also give a ton of HP, Pierce, and Chaos Res. Uh, these are my previous pants that I was using. Um, I'm still using a Death Chill Relic. I don't know if I updated my video from before. I swapped from my Crab to my to a Death Chill Relic because the Death Chill Relic gives a bit of resistances, but it also gives you a aura that you can activate for flat cold and vitality damage and percentage cold and vitality damage, which is very strong for your minions. Uh, I'm also running a Empowered Acolyte's uh, cord, nothing really too crazy, although it is very nice because the all res manipulation and primal bond, uh, primal bond I don't think works for us at all, but the manipula manipulation is very good. This is like my shittiest piece that I have, I need to replace this ASAP, um, this is just kind of poo poo, same thing with these gloves are pretty poo poo, uh, these are from a reputation vendor in, I think it is, uh, I don't remember, Old Arcovia I believe. And then I actually just bought these two rings right here. You can tell I haven't even augmented them yet, or I haven't even componented them. Um, these were acquired at level 90, where you can find them all the way up. Where are they? Local map, world map. They're up here. Um, and then I think that's pretty much about it. I'm still using that same shitty weapon that I've got, same exact helmet. Oh, yeah, and this, this amulet is pretty fucking OP. Um, this amulet, the crazy thing about it is the bonus to pets bonus that you can use, which gives 200% all damage, crit damage, uh, and gives 80 flat offensive ability. So, going over uh, my resistances and stuff, don't really look at the resist because I'm still gear prioritizing and everything, so these are going to change. But this is my stats in ultimate. This is supposed to be capped, I just need to respec. Um, and then once I get proper augments, I can get Aether and Chaos Res capped, and then I'll be good to go. Uh, in terms of stat allocation, I know this is a very hot question. Go into Physique and Spirit. There's no need for Cunning. The only reason you would ever want Spirit or Cunning, to be honest, in a build like this, is just because of gear requirements. You're not playing a caster. You don't need Spirit. You're not a crit build, and you don't need Accuracy, so you don't need Cunning. So Physique is the only thing that you use. That's it. So every single point should be put into Physique, except for what you need for gear requirements. Now, in terms of the skill tree, uh, I can show you guys what we have here. So I'm going to give you guys my progression skill tree that I think you should use for leveling. So step one is going to be max ray skeleton. Uh, then you definitely want to max undead legion. And then like that's the most important thing here in Necromancer. Uh, get spectral binding whenever you want more HP. That's literally all it does is it gives you just a bunch of HP. Um, this guy doesn't really do shit in my opinion until you get this which is Blight Burst, although one point in Rotting Flames is very good. These are all one pointers, it's because I have plus bonus. But I pretty much would stop like right here. This is like important, right? Getting these two is like super, super important. Occultus is kind of where you really want to drop a lot of your points in because you have Curse of Frailty, which gives you fizz, like basically minus fizz res and movement speed. So it's like temporal chains and vulnerability combined. And then you don't need to get vulnerability, in my opinion, until you start getting Will of the Crypt and Master of Death, because this converts 30% of your minion physical into vitality, and this converts 25% into vitality, although this is only for your skeletons. The secondary part of this reduces their vitality res, which is great now, and it reduces their elemental resistance, which is good for your skeleton mages 
from what I believe. I could be wrong on that. Um, I just have one point in your familiar because Storm Spirit is actually very strong because it gives a flat elemental damage aura and all of those modifiers are scaled off of your pet bonuses. So if I look at my pet bonus right now, my pet bonus without any buffs is 841. If I click say this button and this button, it's now 1100 and with more procs it gets, it gets like 1400. And that's not even counting crit multi, this is a crit build. Uh, okay, so next up, Blood of Dreg is going to be like one of your number one ways of healing your minions, so this is definitely something that you want. And then, when you get to this point, you need to make a decision. That's right. You need to make a decision. Not me, but you guys. You have to decide if you want to go ahead and push to get uh, Manipulation and Bonds of Bismal and a uh, Aspect of the Guardian, or you can decide to instead go 50 points in Necromancer, and again, you'll get both of these late game, but at the beginning, you can push all of this in and you can grab Will of the Crypt, uh, Master of Death, and Call of the Grave, and then you get like your one point abilities here and there. So that's kind of up to you. I really don't know the difference between them, I just know that it was, it felt a lot better getting manipulation at the start, and then I ended up respecking it, and I ended up going Necromancer, but the reason why I went Necromancer um, was just because the way I have my devotions set up, which are retarded, which I'm probably going to redo, is that I was, I basically had to get Typhos for my build to work, and Typhos has 120% vitality damage scaling. And I was like, but I don't really do any vitality damage yet, so I guess it's time to go Necromancer. So that was the reason why I decided to kind of respec and do that. Um, but entirely up to you at what you guys want to do with it. In terms of my devotions, let's talk about the ones that I currently have, and the more important ones. Um, Shepherd's Crook, super important. Number one, always, it's very, very strong. Uh, number two, I got Scorpio Bro, because it's just very easy to proc, and you just get it out of the way. You put it on your minions, and they just, well, on your skellies, and they just fucking just shit on everything. I honestly have no clue what I got after this. Uh, I don't remember the exact order I went in. I can tell you that I did get Staff of Ratosh before I got these two, so it should be, I guess, Shepherd's Crook into Scorpio Bro, and then somewhere along the lines you can grab Staff of Ratosh. Uh, I personally really like Bismal Bonds, although I don't use the summon right now because I have to get another skill, uh, but this is good on like Doombolt or even Ill Omen. But I really like these beginning points here. Uh, Howl of Mogdrogan I think is absolutely ridiculous. I am really, really, really liking the, um, uh, sorry, I'm really, really enjoying the proc on it. The total speed I think is amazing and just phenomenal, along with the percentage of offensive ability. So I'm still thinking though of respecting a couple things, definitely keeping this guy. Um, I was looking really at this guy, Rathosh Veil Warden, because he looks very strong. But I don't know yet, we'll see. I think, honestly, I'll probably drop, like, maybe, like, I don't know, Typhos and someone else and grab Ratosh. But that's for another video. So let me go ahead and kind of show you a little bit of, I guess, footage with my guy in Ultimate. Let me go ahead and pick up one thing really fast, though. Do I have a quest to turn in? I'll do it later. Oh, there's like three boss dudes here? Okay, here we go. Let's just... Here, these are like all level 90s. So this should be like perfect. Actually, I don't even have my fucking skellies out. Wow, this is fucked, dude. <laughs> That's so messed up, dude. Getting bum-rushed by these guys while I don't even have my minions out. <laughs> so normally it would be much quicker, I do promise. But as you can see, the minions tank very, very well. Mythical Grim Fate? What is Grim Fate? Oh. It looks really good. It's just, it's not for me. Okay. So let's go ahead and start. Now, what I have noticed compared to other people is that uh, my build does not kill... Uh, AoE very quickly. It's mainly for single target. I think the single target is really good. Uh, the only time I notice the single target lacks a bit 
is, for example, when I'm fighting a boss that's stationary and doesn't move, I think my minions have kind of, like, trouble with that. I don't know exactly what's up with that. One other cool thing about uh, Sir uh, OG Nepesh is that he gives us a aura here, which is called Shield Defense. I don't know what it does, but it's something defensive, which is good. Okay. Is there like a little boss up here or something? Can I find someone over here? We're gonna find someone, I promise. Okay, here's some dude. Here we go. So that's basically the speed of boss kills. Um, that guy was a bit more tanky than most, like, you know, hero mobs you would see. Uh, the biggest thing I would say with your minions is you really want to make sure you pay attention to their resistances. Minion resistance is probably, like, one of the most, like, annoying things to deal with, but is super important. So you want to make sure that your guys are... I wouldn't say they have to be elemental resistance capped, but they definitely want to be, like, above 30%. Um, you want to make sure that you can get poison and acid res. This is pretty easy. Like I said, I would have more for them. Um, oh, whoops. I just accidentally killed OG Nepesh. Your poison and acid res, a lot of it does come from acid or aspect of the guardian. And this is very good because it gives you the resistance and it gives you the physical resistance, uh, which is very important for basically not dying to physical damage. Um... Aether Res and Chaos Res do come from your auras that you should have on, but I didn't... Did I not put any of my fucking buffs on when I made this video or something? There we go. Alright. Uh, bleed Res, I haven't figured out a way to get them Bleed Res or Pierce Res yet, uh, to be completely honest. But they haven't really needed it, so that's been okay. Uh, I haven't really struggled with too much content... Really, the first place I, like, legitimately died was at, uh, and then I had, like, a couple deaths of some stupid shit, but was at, what is it called? It's, um, it's the new area here. It's the new area up here called, like, Malmouth Out or Outskirts and, like, Ugdenbog. In Elite, I think that this content is, like, way too over, oh, like, overtuned. I don't really mind. Uh, but I think it's, like, retarded. Like, the mobs in Ultimate are weaker than the things here in Elite. That's how insane, like, Ugdenbog is. But yeah, it's been a pretty fun playstyle so far. The other cool thing is you synergize with so many different builds, because you're kind of, like, playing a support in PoE almost, except you're not really a support. You just have so many different forms of auras and buffs and debuffs that it ends up benefiting everybody in your group. See if we can find anyone over here. This is where I was saying where they kind of, oh, actually there's a there's a boss in here. Never mind, just kidding. There he is. We did actually lose. We lost a couple skellies to him. I think he may be like partial bleed. I almost lost this guy to him. So I want to show you guys one more thing. If you have lasted this long in the video, then uh, you get bonus points and you get extra credit. Because I want to show you guys a method that I didn't even know I was doing, but a method that I promise you will keep most of your minions alive throughout majority of the game until they start insta-dying to things that you don't have the resistance for. This guy over here sells these rings, okay, called Legion Conjuration Seals. Now, Legion Conjuration Seals can roll, I don't know exactly high, but I had both, both of my rings I think are still here in my inventory. They give... Uh, health regeneration, damage, and attack speed to your minions. If you have two of these rings like this, that's 60% health regen. Along with your devotion for Behemoth, 
puts it to 80%. And then you have Blood of Dreg... Oh, here we go. You have Blood of Dreg for flat life regen. And you have Necromancer's Call the, Gla uh, Call the Grave for more flat life regen. And your, your minions just basically can tank anything. But again, if they do have shit resistance or you're fighting some bosses... These guys are like fucking moon sliding, dude. They can just kind of instantly die. So that's one thing to really take into account. But anyway, I know this was a bit more of a lengthy video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.